There's a lot of videos out there right now on how to make face masks for the medical community. A very important thing, obviously. What we realized is that very quickly, most everyone is going to run out of elastic, as you probably already have and realize as well. So what we did is look at the most practical way to use quilting fabric to make masks that have ties. What you want to start with is two coordinating fat quarters. From those two fat quarters, you're going to end up with three masks and one extra set of ties. The way that you cut them is you take your first fat quarter, you cut, a, this is the 18 inch height, this is the 20 or 21 inch width. You're going to cut a six inch strip, a six inch strip, a six inch strip, and you're going to cross cut those at nine inches. So you're going to have six pieces that are six by nine, and then the remainder you're going to cut two strips that are an inch and a half a piece. Those are for the ties. So what this gives you is this pair makes one mask, this makes another mask, this makes another. So you get three masks and one half a set of ties because you need four ties. From your second fat quarter, mine too happened to be the same. I actually had a half yard of fabric, but a lot of quilters have fat quarters. Um, what I would normally do is use two different fabrics and that way everything will coordinate not that it makes that much difference for this use, um, but it makes it pretty for whoever gets it. The second fat quarter, you're going to take the 18 inch width this way, the 21 inch this way, and you're going to cut it into one and a half inch strips. You're going to get 14 strips out of this piece, and you had two extras from the other fat quarter, so that gives you a total of 16 strips. That's enough for four masks. Each mask obviously needs four ties, top and bottom on each side. So out of two fat quarters, you get three masks complete and one extra set of ties that you can use on another mask with a different piece of fabric. The next step is to press the strips that are going to be your ties. There are a lot of different ways to make them. Um, what I found to be the easiest that keeps all the raw edges inside so they don't shred and fray, um, but doesn't take forever to try to flip and turn. I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to fold it just over a half inch, uh, just excuse me, just over a half inch in width. And I'm going to just press that again. It doesn't have to be perfect. All I'm doing is getting a little over the halfway mark with that pressing. And see how it's pressed. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take this piece and fold it in, covering that raw edge. So it's approximately maybe a quarter inch that's folded over. And I'm going to press that down. I find if I press it, it saves me a bit of time if I press to this step. So this is turned under here. And now what I'm going to do, instead of pressing again, I could, but that takes more time. I'm going to go to my sewing machine, and I'm just going to fold this in half. All the raw edges are inside. I'm folding it in half, and I'm going to go to my machine, and I'm going to do a back stitch and run the whole length, and I'm going to just hold it as I'm sewing. It's a lot faster than pressing each one. If I try to press this, it's hard not to burn your fingers. And by having it this flat already, one more fold is easy to do and hold. I do also work in kind of a construction uh, assembly line process. I'll do all my strips at one time and cut a number of masks first, then do my strips and then sew them, and then I'll construct the, the uh, masks at the same time. It keeps the process flowing and you don't spend as much time moving from station to station. So next I'm at the machine and ready to sew. I had a foot that looked like this on the machine. It has a uh, opening here. It makes it hard when you're sewing something like this. This can sometimes come up and get caught in there. So a better choice for a foot is something that's either completely open or something like this that has a plastic shield here so the fabric can't pull up that foot will make your sewing a whole lot easier and smoother. So I'll just put that on there. Here is my fabric again. I was folded over beyond the halfway mark, 
and then fold this here and now I'm going to fold it in half and that gets all the raw edges inside and I'm going to just kind of hold it this way slide it in and when I start I'm going to go back and forth a little bit as a lock stitch and then now it's under my foot all I'm doing is holding this and I'm doing a running stitch pretty much right down the middle and just as I go I'm folding this in and holding it as I stitch. It doesn't have to be perfectly down the middle um, but what we want to do is encase all those raw edges if those are loose they start to shred and fray and especially if these get washed a lot um, in industrial washing machines, which I'm guessing they probably will. If those raw edges are loose, they'll just start to fray and fray and they just won't hold up as much as we'd like them to. So I'm going all the way to the end here. And I'm going to chain piece these just like I was a quilter. I'm going to fold the next one in half. Chain piecing means I'm going to leave the other one in there right up to the end. The um, bobbin thread and tail are still attached to that other one. And that way, as I start this one, I can just go feed the next one in. Again, a little back and forth. And stitch and sew. Once you get used to it, you can move along pretty quickly. And... all you're going to do when you're done your tie is going to look like this just real simple um, it's a nice thick tie um, but not too wide so this should work out really nice for what we're doing now I'm ready to start assembling the masks I have my two pieces and my four strips I'm going to set one piece aside and I'm going to pin the straps or ties I should say, about a quarter inch from the top edge. Put in a pin, do the same at the bottom. And then I'm going to come back and lay this piece on top. I'm going to put just one pin right in the middle. And then I'm going to go sew this side. And as I said, if I was doing construction um, assembly line method, I would do this with all of my masks. I'm going to go and sew this side. You might have wondered why I said just put one pin in the middle. The reason for that is we already have a pin underneath both sides holding those stra um, ties in place. And if I try to stick more pins in there, it just makes it bulkier and bulkier and harder to get through. By putting one pin in the middle, I know I'm placed okay. I'm lining up my edge here. And it's going to be hard to get over those ties if you start out at the end. You start sewing and you'll notice your machine gets stuck there because it can't quite feed in. What I do is go in about close to a half an inch put my foot down, put my needle down. So I'm actually on top of the tie. I'm gonna move forward. My machine will go nice and forward for me because it's got something to grab. Now I'm gonna go into reverse and I can go out to the end. And now, there we go, now I come back and I can kind of push it in there and it caught nicely. Take out that pin. And I'm just using the edge of my foot as a guide here. And remember, I do have a pin in here so once I hit that tie, I can reach underneath and pull that pin out to not sew over it. You just noticed I sewed over the other one, but I really shouldn't have. Especially if you're working on a project like this, that you don't want anything to happen to your machine in the meantime. So I suggest don't sewing over pin, don't sew over pins. I'm going to cut that, and I just did a little back and forth there as well. Not beautiful, but it works. And there is that half of my mask done. And I'm going to do that on a whole bunch of masks to get to that point. So my ties are sewn on that side of the mask. They're connected. I'm going to just push them out of the way. I'm going to take my other two ties and I'm going to pin them just like I did the last one. 
along here and along here. Again, about a quarter inch up. Pin that in place. And then I'm going to push those two ties out of the way. I'm going to flip this back and do just what I did on the other side. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to put one pin right in the middle. I'm going to go back to my sewing machine, sew that edge just like I did. Remember, start in a little ways with your needle in the tie, reverse, and then forward. Now that my ties are in, I'm going to have all of them coming out in one small area. I'm going to pin across the top. Next we're going to sew across here and here we want to be sure those ties are inside. I'm going to use two pins on the bottom, one about right here to hold those ties in place and one I'm going to just kind of push those in and another one right here. I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew across the top. I'm going to sew across here I need to leave a hole for where I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to go across here, stop about by my pin, do a lock stitch, do a lock stitch, and finish off that side. So we'll be ready to flip it upside down once that's sewn. I've sewn around, leaving my hole. I'm now going to flip this right side out, just pushing all the ties out through the hole. And again, I do these in kind of an assembly line method. And um, a lot of the masks uh, videos out there have you sew all the way around. They have you put your strips in it or ties in in a different order. To me, it was just easier to manage those ties and keep them out of my way by doing one half and then the other half. Now I'm going to do my uh, go to my iron. I have a small hole here. I'm going to just press that whole thing closed. And while I'm at my iron, I'm also going to set in my pleats. I'm going to go about an inch in, press that, and then about an inch down here as well. At the ironing board, I pressed my seam, uh, excuse me, my hole closed, pressed it, and then I pressed in my pleats. Some of the um, mask videos we've seen have been doing two pleats, some have been doing three. I did two, um, the masks that I had here at home had two pleats like this in them, so that's what I did. If you know somebody who is a healthcare worker, ask them what they prefer. The other thing is a lot of the videos were talking about using flannel um, because it's nice and cozy against the face. That is very true, but the other thing is flannel can be very, very warm. Um, I chose to do two layers of cotton. Um, I've spent a bit of time in a mask, and um, I, to me, I found it difficult to breathe if it was too warm. Um, so either way works. Um, it's kind of personal preference. I put pins in to hold my um, pleats down. Now I'm going to go to the machine, and I'm going to sew a scant quarter inch. I usually use the edge of my foot as a guide, and I'll just stitch all the way around. That will hold the hole closed, and that will complete my mask. Here's my finished mask. One correction, on the last step I said I used the edge of my foot on the outer edge. I misspoke. What I actually use is the inside edge of my foot. And by that I mean right along here, this inside edge. So it's um, about an eighth of an inch. When I stitch, if I can get a good picture here, I'll stitch right about like that, excuse me, this edge along here. And that gives me what's called an edge stitch, which is real close to that edge as I go around. That catches my hole closed really nice, and it doesn't leave a lot of um, fabric kind of flapping over that edge. So I do what's called an edge stitch along that edge. And there you go, ready to go.